Yeah, hi. Okay, I'm uh, just opening your resume. You know, just uh, tell me briefly yourself uh, what are the roles and responsibilities and your. Yeah, uh, uh, coming to myself, this is Pong Chan. Yeah, coming to yeah, myself, okay. this is. Hello? Yeah, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, coming to myself, this is Pawan Chandra. I have total 5.5 years of experience as a web developer. And coming to myself, I have a skill HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Angular, and React. So, Bootstrap, jQuery, all those things. And um, coming to the, my relevant experience, Angular is 3 years, and React is also 3 years. And um, coming to my previous company, Helicon Technologies. And coming to my current organization is the... Um, uh, uh, current product is the CVS uh, Health. The client is CVS Health. Uh, this is a health domain project. So in this, in this project, we are maintaining the hospital's information, doctor's information, patient's doctor's information, patient's information, all those things. And um, coming to my role and responsibility as a vehicle plan, to create the for coding side and to create the components, API integration, CS changes, all those things. For the delivery side, I need to follow the agile methodology. And uh, and to follow the agile methodology, and also we are we are, we are maintaining the, the spin, spin we have spent every two weeks, and we are maintaining the Git repository systems, and we are participating in the grooming sessions, and there is scrum meetings, and sometimes interaction with that that client. So this is a little brief about me. Yeah, uh, the start your technical discussion. So you have the experience in uh, both uh, in both like Angular and React, right? Yes, I have both experience. Yeah. Okay, fine. <laughs> so yeah, I start with Angular. Like, um, suppose if you've been uh, assigned to the new project, Scratch project. So how do you create your mobile uh, plate of Angular application initially? What so, are the steps you're gonna take? So I want to set up a new project, or I want to assign the new project. No, you you want to create a new project, like new application with this angle. Yeah, actually, for that first, I need to install the ng command. I based on the using the ng command, I need to do that one. So I will install, but first I need to download the node software, and then I install the ng command like npm install ng. After that, uh, I create a new project with the command the ng new and the project name. So after that, I will get the all the folders uh, with the modules and uh, app module, and app component, uh, and all those things and node modules and the, all the node modules are uh, required libraries are installed. So when they run the command ng sir, the application will be running. So this is basic project we can set up. Okay. So basically, what is the file which is uh, which is starting the uh, point to that uh, Angular framework, which is understandable. Generally, Angular. Yeah, I, I, actually, Angular is used for single page applications. So, our application is loaded in the only one file that is index.js, in index.html. So, in the, there is a one main file, the first file is there, but in the index.html, we use the one component selector. So, that, in that uh, app component, in that app component, the component will load. But generally, when the application starts, first the, uh, from the index, first the, uh, the app module file will run. So when from the app module, well, all the what are the uh, components we are using, what are the services we are using, all those are maintained in the module configuration. What are in the provision sections in the you know, so all those components like the declaration sections and the import sections, all the required imports, imports modules and other modules, and the all are loaded. All the all objects are loaded with the application, and and also. After loading the, all the object instance, all the component instances and service instances, which component uh, instance we need to take first, that is configured in the boost step in the app module configuration. So after the, all the required instances are loaded, for which you know, based on the selector we are using index to the HTML, that the component will load in on the page. This is the happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Uh, suppose uh, if you want to override uh, the port number for your application, can you do that? Uh, yeah, actually, in the uh, in the we have in the package that just something in the there, there's a configuration configuration file. Uh, I think it is the some in the we will change the there we will change in the uh, I think in the port number in the npm file and we'll, somewhere we will change that port number. Yeah. 
I think I think it's either in the packet that JSON or something in the Angular that JSON. So in some file, I will change. I forget, but we can change the configuration file. Yeah. Okay. What is the other way to? Um, the in the name? ng serve also we can use the port number iphone for port ng serve and we can use change the port number iphone for port number yeah okay uh, what's the difference between the module and the component so mo module is a set of the modules is a con the module is a module which tells is configuring the what are the required modules what are the components are we using what are the services are we using all we are configuring the app module file. It's a module is a set of the components and uh, services files also set of the components, set of the pages, set of the futures, if in the other ways you can say. For example, if I want to develop a college website, we have the modules. Uh, we, we can we can separate the different modules like um, uh, students modules all those. In the students module, we have different components. Coming to the components is a components building blocks of the application, building blocks of any page. So in that page, if, if, if that page we have, we have, every block is we can create as a component. This is a component, yeah. Suppose uh, if you want to create your own component, like uh, what are the ways to create the component and uh, what, what, what uh, inside the component, like uh, component file, like uh, what are the different sections of the, see, different parts of the, uh, yeah, uh, generally using the command you can do like using the ng generate c and the component name. Uh, so then, then they, when when ng, ng generate and see the the, the component name, which, for which name we are creating the component. With that name, one folder is created. In that folder, we have the four files. Like one is the component that is, another component that is HTML, component spec that is, and <coughs> these uh, these three files mainly uh, and component that is uh, and the CSS file. Template CS file. So we have the HTML file, component CS file, and uh, spec file and CS file. This so component of the CS file we mainly use for the, the all business logic, all the component class in the from the component class and the data management, all we are using the component that CS file. In the component that the HTML, all the view, all the HTML view relating to the component, we are using the HTML file. In the CS file, all the, the com CSS styles properties are meaning the CS file. In spec file, we are writing the unit test cases. Generally, this is the flow. And we the data we can pass in the data from the component the TS file to the component the HTML file. Yeah. So in the, in the component this file, we have the other right component decorator. In that component decorator, we will tell what is the HTML file we are using, what is the template you what, what is template and what is the um, CS, uh, CS selector we are using. And after that we we, we, the, we create the class. In that class we create the methods like constructor and on it, all those things, and we will pass in the data like that. So the yeah, that is the and uh, after creating this one, using the selector, where we use the selector as an element in any, any other in any other component, that, that this component will load. Yeah. So, 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 suppose uh, like if you want to uh, pass the data from the chain to parent uh, component, how can you so generally we have two ways. One is we can using the event emitters we can pass from the child to parent, like using the the right output decorate and child component. So uh, so we can create an event emitter. So if any based on any event happening in the child component, from that event we passing data to the e e emitter. That emitter we are uh, the pass to the output. So that output we are passing to the uh, parent component. From the emitter value pass to the parent component from event. So in the parent component that we can so we can get the data so in this way we can, we can pass the data from child to parent otherwise other way is we have to use other virtual components in this parent component then we will get the all the component all the child components props and metals yeah in this way we can pass the data yeah as per when this lazy learning is, for example, uh, actually in the Roplic in the Angular, uh, some unnecessary module is also loading uh, along with the, in the, along with the uh, page load. Some unnecessary modules are also unloading. If you want to load the particular modules only when we require it, then we use a lazy learning coaching concept. So in the root file, we using lazy loading comes in the using the, the rows and the rows, we are configuring the lazy loading and like what are the import, what are the modules we need to load, those are those we will load children, we will load that. Uh, uh, that uh, that modules then particular navigation the one that particular modules will load that is lazy loading coming to the easy loading concept as you as can before loading the component uh, this uh, this component uh, this modules will load okay uh, 
So, did you heard of like uh, this uh, RFUS libraries? Yeah, like uh, using a pipe map of operator, this thing, things, yeah. and sometimes switch map also, yeah. Actually, why, why do we use this? Uh... Library. So actually, when we get when we get when we get the subscape when we observe the data from the server, uh, if you uh, from the server using the uh, HTTP library, using the HTTP guard to get HTTP the post. When we uh, get the data from the server uh, to manipulate the data, we are using this uh, RxJS service. And also, if you if you want to maintain two API calls or the combination of API calls data, so to manipulating data is we can use this, those RxJS operators. Yeah. Uh, how, how could you like uh, the uh, how could you like uh, do the navigation so uh, in actually the in the, um, in the app in the app root module we'll convert the root module root module for children we, for root we do the one roots object in that roots object we'll define what is the path and what is the component we need to load so we will configure. So what is the path? If for example, the path A and we do the component A. If we use a slash, the component A component will load. This way we can configure. Did you uh, did you work on this uh, uh, Python application? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Redux. Yeah, Redux. I use yeah. Redux. Yes. So basically, like, uh, why do we go for the Redux? So what, for what the. For small application, for image application, we don't want Redux. But if you, our application has the large number of data, we application main large number of data, then if you use the Redux is the best option. Because if you want to main the data all at the central point at the Redux store, and we can we can share the data uh, between the components, subscribe the data between the components, you will from that store directly. So then in this way, uh, at the time we can use the Redux stores. So coming to the Redux store, we have the store, and the store we are maintaining state objects. So our data is maintaining the state objects. So in the components we can subscribe the, the data from the so from the create we create the stuff from the store we can subscribe the data. Uh, if you want to create the data, update the data, change the data, we using the we have the inspection on action based on the action type and action pillar through the reducer we can um, use can we can change the data, create the data. So this is the flow generally. Yeah. Uh, let's move to this JavaScript. Yeah. What are the closest in JavaScript? Closest are like inner function which has the uh, access to the outside function variables. Uh, which has the, uh, uh, like for example, uh, a closest inner function which has access to the outer function variables. It's generally we use for data privacy purpose. For example, we have an, uh, one, uh, if we want to get one, our username uh, not directly uh, to the inner function, then we use the closest. Yeah. So what's the difference between this var and let keywords? Let them let to var constant are uh, sorry let constants are introduced from the ES6. The difference between the let var is uh, generally let to var both are used for the variable declarations, but the main difference is variable uh, where the declaration is taken is global scope, let is a local scope. For example, if we declare the variable with the let with the let inside the inside the block, we cannot use that variable outside the block because the let scope is related to that block level only, local scope only. But we can use the we can declare the variable with the where inside the block, and we can use that variable outside the block also. At the same time, outside the block where variable we can use the inside the block also. So where is a global scope? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, so what is self invoking in uh, what is javascript self invoking self self in self invoking self invoking functions uh, yeah, we have a function a function automatically is invoking by itself is called self invoking we call that function by itself is self invoking I using underscore invoke i did not have, i forget that no, skin, but the the tip uh, the concept is like that Can you write it down on an example? That was, uh, I forget the syntax, but uh, the concept is like if you, if you have function, if you want to, I think underscore invoke function is there, I think so. That invoke function will call by self invoke. I mean, it's, it's, this call for that function call by itself is called self invoke. Okay. Uh, 
So let's move to the React. Uh, the React, like, uh, do you use like class class components or um, functional components? Yeah, both are used in both areas. Yeah. Okay. Oh, what are the different uh, different types of hooks? Yeah. Okay. What are the different types of hooks? Uh, use a use state, uh, use state, and uh, use effect. Uh, use callback. Use memo. Use ref. Use selectors. Uh, this type of yeah. Suppose if you want to pass the data from uh, uh, data from the one uh, component to another component, so how do you pass this data? So we can pass the data from one component to another component through the props. Uh, from one component, we can, we can pass the data as a props to the to one other com child component. From the child component, we will get the props object. Uh, we can uh, this we can do the object extraction. We get the props individually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. So, like, uh, this reactor will support the two way binding. Which one? This two way binding does it support? Oh, no, no, I think it's not supported. So then, uh, then how do you pass the data from the child to parent? The, then what we'll do is I will uh, from uh, from the fun, uh, from the parent component I will pass a one uh, fun event one function handler as a property to the child component. If any event happens in child component, I will call that uh, that uh, that function handler <coughs> automatically. That uh, that function that function call in the parent component. Then that that will update in the parent component. <coughs> okay. uh, did you did you use any like uh, uh, testing framework in Angular? Jasmine, uh, Jasmine, I use uh, like I use the uh, like it uh, describe and you know, just mock function, expected function, and the component fixtures. Uh, using that one, you can do yeah. And we uh, try to cover the code coverage up to 60 to 70 percent in the karma. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, let's move to the CSS part. I have a scenario. Uh, uh, we have a, a table, right? The tables you will be having the columns. Okay. So just uh, I wanted to like uh, I wanted to like uh, like I wanted to like insert the term use or items anything. Okay. In vertical way, in the vertical way, like one uh, column is uh, filled up, like it will should enter to the next column. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 So to to achieve this with this uh, flex, mm -hmm. how how could you achieve this one using so the flex? For the using the flex for the parent, uh, we have remaining divs, and for the parent div, I use I use display flex. Then uh, all the child divs comes align. Uh, we can horizontally align uh, using the flex direction row or flex direction vertical. Then you can give the direction. If you want to give the direction, uh, flex direction row uh, like that, and we can uh, we can center and justify content and justify content and the align item center. In this way, you can align the items. Okay, fine, man. I'm done uh, from my side. Do you have any questions? Yeah, that's it. If you select, I need to work on Angular React, uh, which project? Ah, uh, basically, it's based on the requirement. Basically, as of now, like everything uh, with the front end developers. Okay. Okay, sure. Yeah. Thank okay, you. Okay, much. Bye. Yeah, bye. Yeah.